today. From Orchard Park, New York. It's the AFC Wild Card Round on EA Sports. We'll see Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills taking on Phillip Rivers and the Indianapolis Colts. Playoff fever has come to upstate New York, and there's a look at Bills Stadium here at Orchard Park. Straight ahead, it's wild card weekend, and we've got a great one in store between the Indianapolis Colts and the Buffalo Bills. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the postseason on EA Sports. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And, Charles, that's really all I need to say to get you fired up. It's the postseason on EA Sports. And no one's more fired up than the guys who are going to be playing in this game. This is what they fought for all year long. Go back to the OTAs, the mini camps, training camp, throughout the season to get to the playoffs. The intensity level will be off the charts. Colts ready to go to work here offensively. And it is Phillip Rivers, their veteran coach quarterback and longtime charger who will be under center and what an important january in the start of this run for him because that phrase a sense of urgency he feels it at this stage in his career he's done everything an individual can do the one thing that's eluded him a super bowl title and he wants that desperately for himself and his team they throw right away and that's complete out on the right side and they get him down but not before he takes it across the 40 yard line 17 yards on the game's opening play and a quick first down. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus, and indeed, he gets enough for the first down. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. From the gun, Rivers. This will be taken in by Michael Pittman. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. Another first down, this time on a gain of 19. He's locked in early. Two nice first down completions to start. I like the fact that he's seeing the whole field early, spreading it around a little bit in the early going. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. First carry now for the former Badger, Jonathan Taylor. He had to fight that time. Ran through one tackle, but ultimately he's only going to get back to the line of scrimmage. And Charles, despite this list of key inactives that we see here, they've obviously still been pretty successful. Give everyone credit for this one, because to me, when that happens, key guys are out, the next man steps up and plays well. But that starts with the organization itself, all the way through. No excuses for guys being out. Finding guys who are capable backups who can step up and play when they need them. And we've seen the results of that. This team knows how to work through things. First down, Rivers. Open man is Trey Burton. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Same exact result as last play, a pickup of 11. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius, understands it. First and 10, Taylor now. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Working out of the gun, Rivers. 
to the end zone, but it's incomplete. It's been a good opening drive offensively thus far, but you know they don't want to waste it and settle for a field goal attempt after that incompletion. So this is a big play coming up here on third down. Here comes the seventh play of this opening drive. They've moved it well, but here's third down. And he's got it. And he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. From 17 yards out. And the Colts take it right down and score on the opening drive. Forget about the storylines of being intimidated in the playoffs on the road. I mean, that was pretty clinical right there. Yeah, they didn't treat it like it was a playoff game in January, did they? No. Look. That felt much more like, hey, we're back in August, running a few drills in the practice field. They seem unaffected by what they're facing in this one. Now the try here for the extra point. Well, these may be an adventure this afternoon, but this one is good. So that drive in total eight plays, and it culminates in an Indianapolis touchdown. So after the touchdown, here's Blankenship kicking off. Andre Roberts now to return it. And he won't quite make it to the 25. For the Buffalo offense coming out, and it is Josh Allen who is at the helm. And of course, it's been mentioned all week in the run-up to the game, but guess what? We're going to say it again. Normally the number two seed, they get to sit at home and watch this game because they would have gotten an open week, a bye week, and gotten ready to play in the next one. But now they have to play the number seven seed, and we know that's a dangerous game. Are they good enough to win it? Should they win it? Of course. But we also understand they're going to need a big performance from their quarterback in order to advance. Throwing on first down is Allen. That's caught by his tight end, Dawson Knox. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Now the first carry for Devin Singletary. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. Play fake to Singletary, and now it's Allen. He gets it to Brown, complete. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. Well, that's one way to convert on third down, picking up 26 yards. Well, fair to say that when you're looking at guys that can run like the wind, you often find him at the wide receiver position. And that was special there. And that's the kind of play where you have to kind of catch your breath afterwards and just give me a second here because when he shifted into high gear, he was an absolute blur out there. No substitute for speed. We talk about that all the time. The evidence was right there. And according to Next Gen Stats, his top speed on that one, better than 20 miles an hour. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 41. Working out of the shotgun, here's Allen. He'll try and fire this down. Oh, man, it's caught at the six-yard line. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. 39 yards there, a big one. Big plays always wind up being a big theme as we get rolling in these playoffs, and the defenses that can avoid giving them up but they're the teams that tend to go far. You may not eliminate those big plays, but if you can limit them, then you've got a chance to get to the ultimate game. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. To the air, Allen. That's caught by Brown for a Bills touchdown. A three-yard touchdown pass. And the Bills are an extra point away from tying the football game. 
And the QB rating right now, sky high. Four for four on that opening drive, and it ends with a touchdown pass. Yeah, I don't know quite how to figure it out. I think I need my friends from MIT to come in and help me. <laughs> but I think 158.3 is the number one. Yep, that's the right? high That's mark. the highest you can get. That's where he is. He'd like to continue on that pace. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. had it each team has scored 7-7 seven, seven here as the kicks away fielded near the back of the end zone and Rodgers will hold on to this one and it'll come out to the 25 out comes this offensive unit as they get set to take over here and you know a lot of talk about these two versus seven games this year in the playoffs something that we've never had before and this one of now six games on wild card weekend but, you know, we've seen the six seed in the past make a run, Charles, so why not the number seven seed? And I'm still getting used to hearing two versus seven. You know, it's still... And the Bills are going to yeah, get him yeah, as he goes down. Go. Jerry Hughes. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him. We said it before the game, and I think it's still a these guys are going to advance in these playoffs, they got to wreak some havoc coming off the edge. Yeah, wild card round. They told us the wild card could be that defensive pressure. They showed it there. On second down, it's Taylor. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets them up for third down. I was pretty surprised there when they lined up to run it on second and long, but it worked out for them. It certainly did, and that requires some confidence, some fortitude, and a little bit of hope, doesn't it? You hope you catch your defense just right and break off a big run to help yourself out on the next down. And this is what you want to see from a defense. Give up an opening drive touchdown, that's fine. But how about them going back out there, recommitting themselves to the task at hand and forcing a three and out and giving the ball back to their offense. Seven yards on the return after a punt of 39. And the Bills will take over the football with a first and 10. And now back out comes the offense. And, of course, you know, you wondered who would be that team this year to get the number two seed because, remember, as we all know in the past, they'd be home on the couch right now getting ready for the divisional round. That is an excellent point. Instead, now, they're playing for their playoff lives, and they can't worry about the idea that, well, in the past, we wouldn't be playing this weekend. The bottom line is, as the number two seed, you do have to play. The good thing, you have the home field advantage. They need to go ahead and play to that level. And you just know that before the season, they were like everybody else thinking, oh, seven playoff teams, yeah, had an extra one. Trying for Brown, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Kenny Moore. Breaks the tackle, he's got room to run. Pass the 20, and he will bring it back. An interception return for a Colts TD. And we'll see if that pick six looms large as this game continues because we've seen plays like that alter a lot of playoff contests over the years. I would agree with that totally. And you often think to yourself, why do they alter it so much? Because after games, don't we hear coaches and players say, well, one play doesn't usually determine the outcome. But I don't think that's really true, do you? Because there's times when we see plays like that, and all of a sudden the momentum jumps to that team side, it deflates the other side, and they never pick it back up. And then things really go from there, don't they? That's the thing for me. We talk about momentum changes. A play like that is the ultimate you momentum it? change. It, you always worry about the plant foot in the snow, but no problems there. And that makes the score 14-7. to seven. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Here's the all-pro returner from 2018, Andre Roberts. And a penalty marker's down on the field. And they might be backing up a bit here to start the drive. Well, that holding 
call set him up with not great field position. Not at all when you tack on the penalty. With that field position after the return wasn't terrific, it's not a great starting field position as well. And now the drive starts with a completion out to the right. They'll contain him to just four, second down. I think defensively, you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. That's a good chunk of yardage. It's going to be canceled out. And we always talk about hidden yardage in a game. That's going to count as that because now it doesn't go on the books, but now they have to make that up again, don't they? Flushed out right. And he's able to find Diggs. And mark him down way up close to the 40 at the 39. That third down conversion, good for 23. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They talk about mobility on quarterbacks all the time. Here's where it really pays off. Able to move, evade, and is accurate throwing on the run and picking up a first down. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. So the shotgun snap to Allen. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. From the gun, it's Allen. And he comes back with one complete. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. The Mills passing game, getting him down the field. They've got another first down. From the gun, Allen eluding the pressure right. He hits Beasley right side. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. More muscle up front for this second and two. They've got three tight ends out there. He was out there waving his arms. And when you got a quarterback out of the pocket looking for any help, I guess waving the arms is helpful. It certainly is because you got to get his attention because now you're in scramble drill. So everyone's adjusting their routes, finding open space. And he found the right spot for the completion. And he is going to have a Bills first down as he's able to get about three that time on third and inches. It's a gain of three, and it gets him the first. I know the game's changed. A lot of people would say it's evolved. Look, I'm a little bit Neanderthal, okay? I love this. No exotic formations, no misdirection. Just line up and run the darn ball, pick up the first down. I love it. Yeah, third and short, that's what you're supposed to do. Like you said, old school smash mouth football. Back to the air on second down, it's Allen. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions. Third down here in 10, but you're still in field goal range. And that's the thing to keep in mind. They're in field goal range, so now you don't take any unnecessary risks, but you try to find a way to get back to what you were doing earlier in the drive in order to finish this one off. And that's caught by Beasley. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. That's a third down conversion to 24 yards there. Nice play. Looked like the defense put pretty good pressure on him, but he's able to flush out to his right to try and evade people. On the run, had to get on his horse. Still accurately throws a nice pass for a first down. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. They'll look to run with Morris, and he'll actually lose a little bit of yardage here. Back to the two. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. Allen now looks to throw. 
So they hit pay dirt, but don't count it yet. There's laundry on the field. We'll see what the penalty flag is about. So reverse the celebration. We'll see if they have something else in their bag of tricks. And isn't that always tough to watch when they score and you see the excitement and then when they realize those points aren't going to count? Can they get it back together and find their way back to the end zone? It's Knox, the tight end, making the catch. No gain that time on the completion, and it'll be third down. Two minutes to play here in this first half of the NFL playoffs. A reminder coming up at the half, as we've done all year, we'll get you to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. Coach will have the lowdown on what's going on here in this wild card weekend as we begin on the road to Super Bowl 53 in Atlanta. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. Can this defense hold them out? Here we go now. Fourth and goal from the two. Now Allen. And this is caught for a Bills touchdown. Dawson Knox there to make the grab. And the Bills are an extra point away from tying the football game. You get down near the goal line, this is where having a sure-handed tight end becomes a luxury, and it pays off big time, especially when the defense sells out against the run. He finds himself open for an easy touchdown. Tyler Bass now for the point after. That drive, a long one, spanning 15 plays. And it ends in a Buffalo touchdown. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. Rodgers on the return. Let's do that. Let's. The Colts getting another possession here on offense. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked so something well. else, and they take him down. The Bills get to him. Now the Bills are going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. Another try after the first down sack. Rivers. Now the pressure comes and he goes down. Just inside the 10, back at the 9. Now the Bills will use the second of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. After the sack, they'll come up now third and long. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see them run the ball here just to try and get some space. And indeed, that's what they'll do as they run it here. And a short gain here across the 10 to the 12. And the Bills are going to go ahead and use their final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Here now, Roberts. It'll be a 44-yard punt. The return goes for eight. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. The 
Buffalo offense ready to go for their next drive. Good drive last time. Really effective passing the football. Do you maybe mix it up, now go to the ground game and surprise the defense a little bit? I would anticipate the defense making some changes, but I wouldn't necessarily just absolutely go in the opposite direction. They're doing so well throwing the ball. Yeah, well, I wouldn't change it up until they showed me a reason to do so. He's going to look deep down the field. And an incomplete pass. Oh, yeah. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. He certainly had a good game throwing the ball so far, but I think he was trying to take that from good to great with that throw, trying to get one downfield. Now at third and two, they're going to elect to throw with Allen. And tight coverage there. It's knocked away incomplete. Kenny Moore that time there on the coverage. Has to be a little bit of frustration there. Back-to-back -back incompletions. Receivers blanketed on both attempts, this time on third down. Feeling like they're not quite in field goal range yet. They're going to go for it on four. And again, it's Allen. John Brown and brought down but able to get it to their 30-yard line. The conversion is successful with a sizable gain of 15 and the decision to go for it looks like a smart one. So first and 10 now from the 30. He's going to air one out. And that is caught. But he will come down out of bounds, says the side judge, incomplete. He was looking for Isaiah McKenzie that time. But it'll be second down. Now Allen again. He's going to go up top again. And this is intercepted, but they'll say out of bounds. So very close to a turnover there in the end zone. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. The kick by Bass is good. And the Bills will take a 3-0 lead. 